listening to Chasing Prophecy Radio, where we discuss anything and everything beyond the scope of normal. On UPRN Talk Radio, FM 107.7 in New Orleans and FM 105.3 in Mississippi. If it's unexplainable, we're talking about it. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic, we cover everything where the unknown becomes the known. And now, now, here are your hosts, 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 Jenny Jenny Nicasio Nicasio and Tom Tom Conway. Welcome to Chase and Prophecy on FM 107.7. In New Orleans and 105.3 in Henderson Point, Mississippi, where we discuss anything and everything beyond the scope of normal. I'm Jenny Nicasio along with Tom Callway. Good evening, yeah. everyone. <clears throat> hello, hello to everybody, Jenny. Do you you know this is the last one before the Ooh, eclipse yeah. next week? So, you know, we have to prepare the masses here. Yes, we do. I just want to let you all know, you can purchase your glasses on Amazon. (laughs) We were discussing (laughs) on Facebook where to get your your glasses. You can get them on Amazon. There's there's tons of them, and they're all certified, so don't be a scaredy cat. Oh, they're certified. That's good. Yes. You you can't get the counterfeit. No, no, it's not a good good thing. Uh, We were discussing um, my uh, daughter-in-law. that said, do not let your pets go out because they can go blind. Yeah, if they look up at the sky. I didn't know, that. I didn't know about that one. The pets, too. Yeah. yeah. Nicole, it's, go uh, ahead and get your glasses. Go ahead there. You know, you, yeah. you're allowed to spend, live well, life a little. We could always tie them on my dog. I mean, he can look out, you know. <clears throat> and they said it's like a thunderstorm, too. It's they, they, they know that there's something going on, so they're a little nervous. I know my dog. I don't know about you. My dog goes crazy. Is when it about that storm. or is it about the Hadron Collider? It could be the CERN, maybe them opening up those particles or all those, yes, you know, what do you call those little crickets? Yeah, um, coming out of little the atoms. Yeah, uh, all these little demons that are coming up. <laughs> you never know. Hey. Little little do they know what they're in for here. <laughs> I know. I know, really, seriously. But um, if you're just joining us, we are broadcasting on a number of different platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Um all over the country, not just the American, you know, it's, we're all over. So yeah, just make are. sure you share the link. And if you join us tonight, make sure you comment and ask any questions for our fabulous guest tonight. Absolutely. Right. They, you know, we, we want to hear from you and you know what, if you're from a different Realm. country, time zone, wherever, just share where you're from in the chat. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a shout out here. You Even know, if we, you're we from a different it. dimension, we will, yeah, if you're here from a different dimension, you know, we'll we'll go live for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, definitely. Cindy, but, hello again. Everybody, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you share the link and tell your friends. It's going to be a fun night because we've got two fabulous guests tonight. Yeah. So I just want to um, talk about our first guest, Tiffany Warren from Los Angeles. She's a psychic intuitive with a unique gift for seeing beyond the veil. So Tiffany will share her riveting experiences from the supernatural crossing over spirits to cleansing haunted spaces and her tales promise to captivate and illuminate the mysteries that surround us so without further ado i just want to go ahead and welcome her onto the show i just got to find her in my chat darling she was here early today so i hope she's still here here welcome to chasing prophecy tiffany (laughs) hello jenny and tom thank you so much for having me you're so yeah. welcome. I love that quote. I love that quote above your head. It's wonderful. <laughs> yes. Good eyes, I, I I'm here for any affirmation that anybody has. So let's let's go. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. So Tiffany, tell us how your abilities and how you got started. Um, you know, it was when I was about 12 years old. I my uncle passed away. And our, our whole family, you know, was joining us at our house. And a lot of people were in the house spending the night so we could, you know, grieve together. And I woke up uh, in the middle of the night. I don't know what time it was. And I heard music. And I couldn't, I was like, is, is the radio on? I'm trying to figure out, mm-hmm. like, every, you know, speaker, anything. But no, nothing was on. But it was coming from the intercom. 
And I walked over and I, I listened and I thought it sounded a little strange and I couldn't really figure out any of the instruments. Like there wasn't a distinct piano or violin or anything. It was very strange, but very comforting. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, being 12, I got a little scared. So I ran back to my bed and <laughs> covered yeah. my bed. And just after that, it was either the light side or the dark side would appear in front of me wherever I was. I started having um, dreams that were very vivid and different experiences, things that I could see around people. And I was pretty much in denial well into my 20s and uh, had to really embrace it because you have no other choice when if you're chosen to have these abilities, you have no choice but to embrace it. So I did, and I'm happy that I did because I help a lot of people. That's that's so wonderful. Th thank you for sharing that. And uh, I've interviewed a number of people who <clears throat> have a sort of similar skill set th that to you. And, you know, I've made the mistake before of calling it a, uh, a gift. And some people, you know, they don't like it to be called that because, you know, it, it implies that it's all good when sometimes it isn't. Um, can you share about how you differentiate these entities that that you see? How do you know what's what? Yes. Um, well, I usually say this on interviews and when I'm talking to people, the un Fortunately and unfortunately, my specialty um, is our demons. And Ooh. they're Ooh. not fun. Um, <sighs> my bet. <laughs> properly tormented um, from the time I was 15 until I was about 19. And I know that particular set, no matter the level, there is a feeling, there is a, a scent, there is, there are so many things that go along with that, that it's undeniable what it is when I walk into a situation. Um, okay. If it's an entity or something else, I can, I can usually see it and I'll know what it is, even if it's kind of hiding from me. So I've learned to trust what I'm seeing, what's being given to me by my guides, and um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I can see it, I can feel it. I usually know right away what it is and I can you know, tell people what's in their house or office or school or whatever it is. Okay. That's a cr crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, no, because you, you sense demonic forces more so than angelic or are they the same? Uh, those are probably the same. Because when I first started out, I have a close relationship with God and I'm not a holy roller, but I do have a close relationship with God. And so when seeing angels or anything like that, um, it's, it's still a scary, but it's a good scary. Mm. And it is, it just, it feels great. Mm -hmm. um, a demon is not something you want to move towards. No, no. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> there are, as I've learned throughout my life, there are, um, different levels of demons and uh none of them are fun none of the levels are fun i wouldn't i wouldn't that's scary it yeah scary and living I, being born and raised in los angeles and the things that are going on there now i i see a lot of them you see a lot of demons in los angeles <laughs> <laughs> that's scary <laughs> I, I love my hometown but yeah <laughs> real so yeah yeah i believe it's real yeah it, it's scary i mean i there's right now with this day and age there's a lot of demonic forces out there I, it's mm -hmm. it's hard to even imagine what how people how it can be worse you know it, can it get worse i mean apparently it can i mean depending i've gone into homes where I, and i'll be honest with you there there's a rule there's like a biblical rule that we have authority over Satan, right? And I, I hold that very strong when I go in to check out places or someone's home. And I listen to what people are telling me and I know the behavior and I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> and I'm not quick to tell them it's a demon because some people really freak out, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's real, it's there, it's in your face. Can it get worse depending on the situation, depending on the person, depending on what door they're opening, mm -hmm. um, what they're messing around with? I get a lot of that. Uh, people playing around with stuff and they, they want to be mystical and, 
and they end up opening the door to something. Ah, oh, jeez. Then they have to, then they call me. Yeah. Um, so that was a good point. I, I wanted to to touch on that just a little. Hey, Joe. Um, I wanted to touch on that just a, a little bit. So, like in hospitals, right? There's like bedside manner, right? Can you explain a little bit your like house side manner when something is really mm -mm in there? You know, how how do you approach that with a homeowner? Hmm. Well, I typically I, I have a calming um, way about myself. With That's for sure. <laughs> I, I just really use my timbre. I sit them down. And honestly, most of the time they know, they know that there's something like really serious going on. They may not know what it is, yeah. but they kind of know it helps them. I've had a few people start crying. I've had some people there's like, don't leave until you get it out kind of thing. <laughs> like, okay. So I talk them. That would be me. <laughs> And I also tell them the tools that God has given us to have authority over these things. And, you know, the only thing that can really hold you back is, is your fear. But like I said to other people before, not other interviews, it's scary. I mean, I'm still scared going in, but my faith is stronger. So, yeah, it has to be strong to do something mm -hmm. like that. Tell us a little bit about soul stories. Yes. Yeah, so soul stories, um, they are little videos every single thing is a true story um every word and 2020 i was guided spiritually to start putting these stories out uh, before i wasn't really sharing a whole lot of me my abilities or what i do and i got a very strong message to start sharing them so i did um i have a wonderful editor and we just know each other he's in india i'm here and he just knows what i want what i need and we put it together and and it's great that's wonderful that's wonderful um cindy has a pretty good question uh are these demons and people you see or just demons on their own account if demons and people do they have distorted faces okay. Good yeah, good question. Uh, both. So yes, I see them in people. And yes, I see them just kind of hanging on their own. Um, distorted, it depends. Um, I've seen that happen before. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a certain look. Um, may I tell you a quick story? Of yeah. So I was coming home from work one night. This was mm -hmm. years ago. And I'm driving down a, a main boulevard that there weren't a lot of cars when um i was in the lane and I, you know you're tired after work and you're not really tuned in and thinking yeah. so this truck comes up on the side of me and it starts speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and i figured it's just somebody you know goofing off really wasn't mm -hmm. then the truck swerved towards my car and made me react and so i turn around to like yell <laughs> or give them a look and this guy leans his head out the window and I could see him clearly and he's he looked at me and I know he looked kind of weird and he smiled he grinned so I could see his teeth and oh my. His came to a point oh and I I don't think it was makeup and I, I was, I, I completely lost, like my foot just completely lost speed from my car because I was just so shocked. Yeah. So there was a look that, um, and, and at that time I was in my twenties. So I always check back with my, you know, my people and this one lady, mm -hmm. she's American and she's like, oh, you saw your first demon and, and on earth, blah, blah, blah. She told me the whole thing. So they're just, the skin color is always a little different underneath the eyes, a little different and deep in the eyes. So I, I can tell the difference, but distorted, it just depends on what you come up with, you know? Yeah. It just depends. Can any of us tell that if a person is possessed or there's a demon in them by looking at them? Do I you think so. I think some people think it's something else. Um, and some people don't want to see it. So they kind of put their blinders on and, mm -hmm. I've gone into situations, into homes, or I'm dealing with people, and and it, you know, like you know, you um, you have a, a a demon in your house, you know, and they're just like, oh my gosh, I didn't, you know, and so it just kind of depends. But when you're looking at someone, and I don't want people to take this and go run and say, oh, you're a demon, everybody's a demon. 
it's just a it's a feeling it's a it's a fearful feeling uh demons tend to play on your insecurities so they will make you feel a certain way that you don't want to feel um they will expose your weakness they will say things and completely trip you out and it's kind of like a taunting and they say these things these factual things about you and you're just like how do you know that you know mm. And uh, I was speaking, it's a whole story behind this, but I was speaking to a guy who had demons in him and he was just not okay. Mm. And that he knows that my nephews are like, that's like a weak point for me. Like nobody, you know, messes with my nephews. Yeah. And actually like mentioned and like said his name and I was shocked. And yeah, so it's just a, it's a little game that they play, but I believe that people can see it if they're, you have to see it with your, your heart, like with what you're feeling, your gut, you know? Okay. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. Um, it, it, if it was easy, everybody would be able to do it, right? You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Yeah, they would no. need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing is, let's say somebody, one of our listeners is um, having some issues. They're hearing this at the right time. They're having issues in their home. There's some kind of something and they don't know what. What are some things they can do to protect themselves so it doesn't get any worse? I uh, love that question. Uh, first thing is really center yourself and whatever your belief is. Center mm -hmm. And <clears throat> hold on to that. Make sure that you're doing positive affirmations and that you're calling on someone, whether it's your ancestors, you know, not everybody has a belief in God. If it is God, call upon God. Um, I'm looking at my beautiful picture of Goddess Kali. I have a team, Goddess Kali, Ganesh. Um, and you make sure that you're being protected. I always call Archangel Michael because he was literally made for that job. And mm -hmm. You call them in, um, wearing your, you know, I have my, my selenite here. I have a couple of selenite necklaces and some tourmaline, um, hematite. So knowing the meanings behind these things and being able to wear the crystals and uh, really lock your house down, close the doors, don't let them in. Um, I always do salt water around the outside of my home, around the any openings, windows, sliding doors. Um, I holy water uh, if I feel like I need it. Of course, mm -hmm. cage, you know, so Palo Santo. So there are a lot of things you can do to protect yourself. Uh, the fear is what they feed off of. And I'm not telling anybody to oh, deny yeah. and being afraid. Go ahead and be afraid, but let your um, faith be more. Okay, great answer. Um, oh, Nicole, um, if you hear voices, does it mean you have a gift or you might be possessed? Hmm. Um, I guess, you know, how do you differentiate one or the other? It depends. There are a lot of things that come along with um, having abilities. Mm -hmm. It's not always hearing. And there is a long list of things that you could fall under as far as abilities, right? So it really just depends, um, depending on what these things are saying to you. And um, it, it, it all depends on what they're saying, how are you feeling, if you're hearing things and trying to d differentiate, I would just go into meditation and see what comes in front of you, what you see. Um, deep meditation is, is a wonderful way of traveling to other realms. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I want to go to other rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, you know, um, it, it's definitely, um, you know, it's something that it, more, the more people I talk to in your skill set, right, you know, in, in your line of skills, always, always harken back to the meditation and the meditation practice and, and, and things of that nature and getting in touch with your higher self. So, you know, I've heard it called many, many different things. Um, when you do that, when you meditate, do you protect yourself while doing that? Yes. That's okay. Beautiful question. I gave a reading. I gave two readings actually on, on Easter and 
Um, the first thing I do is I call in my circle. I figure out who your protected circle is. Um, it could be friends that passed on. It could be okay. parents or, you know, parents, um, whatever, whatever you need. I, I, like I said, I call in, you know, the angels, the archangels, goddess Kali, uh, Ganesh, and Christ and the Blessed Mother. So those, that's my circle. So, yeah, definitely protect yourself before you go in. You don't want anybody interrupting, jumping in on your, you know, on your meditation. <laughs> You don't know what it is or who it is. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of practice, right? So you don't want anyone to come and mess that up. Um, no. Go ahead. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, Tiffany, we have another guest, Nancy um, Weber. Did you want to stay on with her or do you, would you like to just, you can um, wrap it up. It's up to you. Uh, wrap it up. I would love to just stay and listen to her, but I'll, I'll be incognito. But yeah, I think okay. I um, followed her before, but I'm not sure. Oh, you can stay on the screen if you can. You can chime in any time if you like. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, I'll hand it over to you, Tom, to introduce Nancy. All right. So yes, um, and, and Tiffany, thank you so much for for your answers. And and uh, yes, Nancy uh, Orland Weber is psychic detective, um, a psychic detective and author who worked for as a consultant for many years for the law enforcement over 40 years actually she's written a book the life of a psychic detective which is an autobiography that details her experiences and techniques for finding missing persons and evidence related to crimes weber has received endorsements from detectives she's worked with and has been featured in multiple television documentaries about her work which continue to be shown worldwide so the one book, Life of the Psychic Detective, and All Nature Speaks, Conversations with Pets and Wildlife. So I'd like to welcome Nancy to the show. Nancy, thank you so much for hopping on and being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jenny and Tom. And thank you, Tiffany. I loved hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So with, um, so Nancy, real quick, um, learning a little bit about your bio and, and you went from a nursing career to a psychic and then working as a psychic psychic detective. What was the motivation behind that change? There were several motivations and pivotal moments in my life that changed everything for me. Uh, I was 25 and pregnant when I was almost murdered oh. and I'm fine. It broke. I always say it broke me open and got rid of the bashful, the shy, the not standing up for myself. So that was great. Uh, I have always loved psychology and psychiatry. Studied it by the time I was 10 years old, did a thesis on it, on the history of insane asylum. So I was always fascinated by what makes anybody do anything. And so when I had things happen, I would look in the mirror and see several questions. Did I bring it about? Did I participate? How did I participate? What is my role? What is my role in healing? What is my role to help others who go through things? And so nursing career, uh, I was very idealistic. And for many years, I was frustrated, did very well, very successful in it didn't appreciate the idea that everything was driven by uh, authority figures, by too many patients saying, well, my doctor said it was okay, therefore. I said, here's the book, read. Read, yeah. the, side, <laughs> read the side effects and the reactions, please. And <laughs> I found that, hmm. But when I went into a, an experimental unit in Granite, an acute psychiatry, uh, acute unit, in South Bronx, Fort Apache, I found my home and I found my synthesis between all the knowing of soul, spirit, seeing, born with it, instantly saw a guide who would teach me over years. And I always question, I'm curious. I don't accept just because people say that's the way it is. And so that led me to um, turning down the top post of research in psychiatry in New York State 
had nothing, didn't know. And in about 12 months, I was fully immersed in the thick of it psychically. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Andrea Puharik and Marcel Vogel. I always said my old mentors and my old um, experimenters were the people who brought it all out in the US. And I was very fortunate to know all of them and also know what doesn't work and what does. Wonderful. So, so it just happened. <laughs> okay. So you, you, you gain these skills, you know, you're, you're psychic. Mm -hmm. What, was the jumping off point between you and getting started with the actual police to work on cases? I was taking my son to karate school and he was mm -hmm. four and then we had just moved to New Jersey and I didn't know that his instructor, black belt lady was the first police female officer in the town. Oh. And she had read about me. Apparently. I don't know. Uh, I, I didn't let people know what I did, but word of mouth back then. Okay. Okay. And she said, can I talk with you? We had a rape in town and instantly I had a vision before she could finish the sentence, told her what it was. The detective came the next week and he became, he was the chief of detectives. He became my reference point. We worked 10 years together until he retired. I worked on every cold case, every fresh case, unless it was obvious what was going on. So it was either no leads or too many leads, and I'd be called in, or I knew what was going on before they did. Oh, wow. And so it was always that way. Uh, it was fun, I have to say, despite the horrors. Mm. Uh, there's always a mixed bag on earth, I call it. You know, you're on earth, you're in the mix. And you have to know how uh, to live with that in a way that doesn't take away your joy. And so I could, and I've been doing it ever since. I've worked with federal agencies, international, just everything. But that's a sidebar. But it's a sidebar that I felt was really important to help other people know if you can do anything even if you can't, you're not working with others about it, it's important to put your, your energy towards healing the planet, healing and helping, however we do it. And so I do. I Absolutely. actually have a lot of fun doing it. Sorry, but <laughs> I think life is filled with joy and fun. And <clears throat> No, that's wonderful. Yeah. How many, how many cases have you solved? Oh, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I would imagine. No, I, I don't keep track. The ones I can talk about only are the adjudicated fully that are not harmful to anybody. Uh, that's, so, yeah. no, key. I do not discuss any of it. If they're still alive and in prison, who knows? <laughs> and they have friends. So I'm very pretty, good point. I don't discuss it on social media ever. I tell them all the same thing. Don't ask me. I won't tell you if I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. But no, you've been on many, many, um, you mm -hmm. just mentioned international state cases, you know, in New York and, and, and all over. Um, yep. I see a uh, question in the, in the uh, chat. Ha have you ever feared for your safety working on any of them? No. No. Okay. That's good. Nope. No, never fear for, I don't fear for safety, period. Uh, life is crazy. We all know it. We all know there are things that we wish didn't happen, but my reference point are caves. During cave days, earthquakes, one cave gets destroyed. Somebody picks up the local stone, goes to a nice cave that they wanted. <laughs> my cave now. It's been going on forever. <laughs> So either you learn how to live with the reference point and and be here in the moment, right? Uh, yeah. You know, Tiffany mentioned centering, and I've been doing it my whole life. I'm a clinically certified aromatherapist. I'm a, I study chemistry. I do a whole bunch of other things. I've worked with 
three psychiatrists separately in different states with their clients every week for years until I decided enough. I've worked with every kind of issue in running the psych unit. And my love is actually holistic everything. Mm -hmm. The planet, what we do, what we use, what we eat, the works. It's always been that way. I ran a nonprofit in holistic education and opened up New Jersey to it years ago. I love uh, knowing that because I've worked with people who were very psychotic and hallucinatory and et cetera, and found that there was many times other things that nobody understood that weren't all psychic phenomena. They were physiological phenomena. Mm. And, or they were trauma encapsulated in their body. And I would say yeah. the ones I worked with who believed that they were, um, that somebody else had possessed them, my term for that was obsession is possession. So mm -hmm. they have to be obsessed in some manner. And one of them I can remember uh, is on my YouTube channel, Florence. Loved her. And she, 20 years, was burning her body. I looked up. She was a new uh, patient in our unit. I looked up and I saw this. She was a very black-skinned black person. And she was walking around about 60 years old. And there was this white, Caucasian, blonde woman right over her abdomen. Hmm. And I jumped up and I said, who's Celia? She said, you see her? I said, I sure do. She was in bed with your husband. Yes, that so-and-so threw me out of my own home. I said, no, your husband threw you out. Why aren't you angry at him? Uh, we became friends. <laughs> Within 10 days, I took her home and taught her how to cook and clean for a year. We followed her weekly with her daughter and son-in-law who would always bring her food and took care of her. And that was the first one I realized there's sometimes a lot more than we know. Yeah. I'll say. Definitely. You never know. You yeah. never know. No. Know. But I find it all fascinating. Absolutely. So um, we have this question on the screen here. Um, Nancy, have you found that psychic senses have increased with the years you have done sp spirit slash detective work? I think detective work, I always say, is the most challenging work I've ever done. And I've done a lot of different ones because I have an interest in pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you and ever I'm, approached to make a, like a series or a movie? Yeah. yeah. And I Alison are. Dubois, she did that. Yep, I know. One of the things I won't do is let others be in charge of any script with me. That happened... One of the companies in the documentary, when it came out, I was furious because it harmed the family that were the survivors oh. of the person murdered. It was a brutal showing, which they were so upset by. I'm still best friends with them, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, mm -mm. and I spoke to the people because I was friends with the crew. I become, I believe everything is about mm, loving the soul of all life, not necessarily liking the actions. And so I will judge the actions, not the whole person. So I called up and I said, why didn't you show me the script? I told you I could help. Right? So I've turned down a lot of reality shows, uh, a film on my work. If I don't have technical control, no thank you. Yeah. Not interested. The documentaries I do like, they were fabulous people. You can say, you know that crews who do documentaries on any subject know more than the usual subjects. <laughs> <laughs> There's a they, lot of research I go in. <laughs> oh my God, yes, including all the police reports. But yeah. Yeah. Well, most of it is about crime. And if it's about a crime, 
there's going to be police reports. There's going to be records. It's going to be public records. You can go and, and, and look it up. Um, and that's why the true crime has, well, oh. taken off in the last what, 10, 15 Absolutely. years. Sure. Um, but to answer her question, yes, absolutely. I tell everybody, I do a lot of mentoring and uh, workshops for uh, people interested in both the spiritual proficiency and psychic, but also in psychic investigations. And so I tell them the hardest thing, the most challenging things you do are the best things you can do. Mm -hmm. After that, everything else is easy. That's we just want to take a quick uh, break to mention everybody that we're talking with Nancy Orlin Weber. I hope I didn't mess up your middle name. And we also have Tiffany Warren in the um, studio too. If you have any questions, we're broadcasting on FM 107.7 in New Orleans and 105.3 Henderson Point, Mississippi, and broadcasting all over the United States and beyond. So if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Let's get those questions in. Um, if I could switch gears, Nancy, real quick, um, to your second book, All Nature Speaks. In that book, uh, not in your other book too, but um, you cite how you found both children, pets, missing items. Mm -hmm. um, what techniques for finding missing items can you share with the audience? Belief is first. Okay. Belief is second, and belief is third. <laughs> There you, go. <laughs> you first have to believe you can do anything, whatever you choose. Okay. It, it's Tiffany is saying she believes she could, so she did. Yes. Double quote, bold. Bold. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> because if you hesitate, you're thinking and you're not in the part of you that can gather the information from the universe. So if you enter, if when I go to missing anything, one of the fun things I tell people, you want to learn how to do it, have somebody you love take something of yours and hide it somewhere in the apartment, house, whatever, wherever mm -hmm. you live, right? Don't tell them. Center yourself. Walk in per room. Sit, stand there quietly, eyes closed, feel the pull. Focus on what you're looking for in your mind because that's electromagnetic. You are electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. And so you're casting a magnetic thought into the field. And if nothing's there, walk away. Find a space where you feel pulled. Once you do, move with it. So I can, that's what I did when I first started teaching. I would not let people give me the money. I'd say, go hide it. <laughs> <laughs> this, and so I would then close my eyes. See, it was $10 for a class back then, 1975. So <laughs> oh, don't start. Hey, hey. <laughs> I haven't raised it a lot considering I haven't because I want it available for everybody. So I would walk in and I would close my eyes and my right shoulder would feel a pull. I'd go mm -hmm. towards the right. Then I'd let my arm be a magnet. I would imagine my arm was a magnet until mm -hmm. it would lift itself with my fingers outstretched and I'd walk to where it's pointing and there would be the 10. Easy. So wow. I kept doing those, not knowing that eventually it would be the old game as a child, walking into a fresh crime scene. Something's wrong with the vacuum that's sitting in the corner. It doesn't feel like anything else. I'm staring at the vacuum. See, people don't pay attention sometimes. Everything is just all together. But you're looking for what doesn't belong right mm -hmm. and so and i see jenny going uh-huh i know that one mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Go for> you. <laughs> right isn't it so i and i'd walk over to the vacuum and i felt the cord and i went oh, it was used in the crime in the murder and it was 
because wow. it stood out as different energy. That energy could have been, if I want to get want to get practical, it could have been coming from the fingerprints that were on the cord, right? Yeah. And that had a very different field of energy. However, my approach to all of it, including talking with murderers, I've been on death row a few times, but I've also talked to murder victims and murderers uh, beforehand. When, that's how I get to know who they are sometimes. I approach everybody soul to soul. I love them all. What I don't mm -hmm. love is your action. Yeah. yeah. Being able to differentiate between, you know, the, the how soul. Else, how else can you have them come forth and tell you anything? Somebody who wants to hide uh, and not everybody will come forth. It has to be a blend. Is it the right uh, mix? Yeah. I call it universal algorithms. It's not up to me. Yeah, that's a wonderful way to put it. I mean, you, you have to create that environment for them to feel mm -hmm. um, comforted. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. you know, you didn't have to mention you were a mentor. I could tell you that from the moment you said you started talking. You know what I mean? You have that mentor, mm -hmm. you know, um, aura about you. Hat. Hat. Yeah. <laughs> hat. We're, we're, yeah. Um, if... Well, let's talking about the hat. Let's put that mentor hat back on. Um, <laughs> what can um, what can you tell people who are listening and our listeners um, about communicating with their with with their pets? You know, I know you mentioned that a little bit in your book. Can you share some techniques or ideas about how they can communicate better with their animals? A funny thought for them some will not have thought about it, is cats have twice the olfactory receptors we have. Dogs have at least 10 times to 100 times more than we do. Okay. Like we have five or six million, cats have 10, 12 million, <clears throat> dogs have 50 to 100, depends on the breed, mm -hmm. depends yep. on the mix. So behavior has a lot to do with scent. What oh. you wear, everything, a lot to do with it. And so a lot of behavior, it has to do with how the brain is absorbing the scent around them because the, too many of the domesticated don't have natural surroundings. Too mm -hmm. much synthetics, too much of anything. So communication can also be difficult be, because I think communication between all life species is natural. All you have to do is go look at anything, mm -hmm. Google, you know, different species will fall in love with each other. They're best friends, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And we yeah. see it all over the place. And cats and dogs I've raised together, all of them rescues, no problem. It is, you want better communication two ways. Get rid of all synthetics, including all fragrance, because fragrance goes right to the brain faster than anything. And then actual psychic work with them becomes much easier at that point. So naturally, if you're bonded with them, you're not stern with them, you're not blaming them, you're not shaming them, just like a, anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, they automatically are sending you information constantly. Oh, yeah. But you're not always, we're not always quiet enough inside to hear it and to acknowledge it. Hmm. Oh. So it really isn't something special. I, I don't think so because worldwide, uh, a puppy drowns and some, some other species comes and picks it up and puts it on land. I mean, come on, everything is communicating all the time it's at what frequency we want to communicate so if i come to you with perfume on and lipstick on from that's not organic and it and i come to you in synthetic clothing and you're a dog who's been abused you're going to get even more frightened i'll guarantee mm. it dogs come here after they've been biting and barking and they walk in my house and they go to sleep hmm. it's like oh my god i can relax finally 
So communication is the most natural. It's not language. It's communication. For me, a horse will have images that they share and hope. And they're looking out at you going, does anybody get it? You know, they're desperate. No, I, I believe it. I can communi I communicate with my dog all the time, and it's scary. All I have to do is think of something. I'm going to go, I want to put my shoes on and go outside without even saying it. Mm. I think it, and he's right there with me at the door. Uh, if I'm going to yep. go to the store, he he knows. If I'm, going, if I'm down here and I'm thinking about her, watch, she'll pop in my studio. It's it's crazy. It's like a, we are so psychic together. It's, it's yes. scary. No, it isn't scary. It's wonderful. Yes, it is wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful because that's, for me, that's the natural state of everyone. Hmm. The unnatural state is we cover up. Our fears cover us up. Mm -hmm. Our language covers us True. up. Our belief systems of, oh, what would somebody think? I mean, because I started actually uh, having the business in the early 70s, I was in shock when people would say, I can't tell my mate because they'll think I'm crazy coming to see somebody. And I'm looking at them going, you, you don't know how to think for yourself? That's the first problem. <laughs> Come <Good> on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good answer. Um, fear, dominant, fear is the dominant emotion on this planet. And, and you know, mm -hmm. the world makes us that way. It makes us scared of, mm -hmm. uh, of everything, of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never bought it. Never bought yeah. it. Well, we have we have three questions no. um, in the audience. And um, Nicole is asking: Is remote viewing similar to astral traveling? I think so. Pretty much the same thing to me. When I started it, I had no clue at all about naming anything. I had always done these things. You ask me about somebody in another country, and I'm there, and. Bob Monroe, the Monroe Institute, he was mm -hmm. in Croton on Hudson at the same time I was, and Dr. Edith Yurka, who brought in Dr. Andrea Puharik, who brought in Uri Geller and Peter Herkos and Ingo Swan. Those, that was going on at that time, but they started naming systems. <laughs> and I'm going, it's Nancy's system. I don't have a name for anything. I just do it. I'm a soul. I'm in a form having an experience. That's all it ever is. So, mm -hmm. yes, my answer simply is call it whatever you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, metaphysical communion is asking, it's, it's intent and belief. If you do not have this, it will not work. Hello, D. Hi. I see her face. She's a beautiful <laughs> soul. Also very psychic. And... We have, I think she's asking, Nicole's asking, the reason, the reason oh. I ask because I feel dizzy every time I remote okay. view. Okay, so I have a funny answer to that one, not the expected, I think. Watch your blood sugar because you're in a different part of your brain physically. You're oh. getting a physical response to a spiritual encounter. But the physical response happens in the body. So I would make sure that uh, what I I don't do anything about that an hour after eating or so. If you've had a high carb meal or a snack or anything like that, because maybe that's part of it for you. Wow. Uh, we don't know. That's just the first thing I think of right then, because dizzy is not a spiritual response or yeah, a spirit a response. Logical. Right. It's definitely makes a lot of sense. I never even put that together, the physical response to to that, you know, and how it could manifest itself in you. Um, what are we talking about in terms of like energy consumption to 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 do these type of things? Oh, it's a lot of energy. I'm sure. I believe it's no different than anyone who is taking care of their own body by commitment and taking care of whatever. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah. sent, you know, Tiffany spoke about it. The centering effects, meditation, peace, 
calm, however you want to call all of it, attaching to nature more, grounding without fear, keeping your frequency high, not lowering it in concern or worry at any time when you're entering into uh, an energetic work. No different. If you were an athlete and you mm -hmm. were going out on a marathon, would you want to stand there worried and concerned and frightened? Or would you want to get into the spirit of it all, have a great time afterwards, chill out for a while, look back and say, that was a lot of fun. Hey, look what we did. So with the readings, for instance, I would always, I used to do more than 40 hours a week readings for oh. years oh wow it's amazing it's a lot of readings <laughs> yeah. uh thousands and thousands i know and so when i did i started breaking it down to 15 minute bridges i call them so after an hour session they were all hours at that time after an hour session i would take a 15 minute centering quiet peaceful playful anything i draw i paint I play, I write songs. I do a whole bunch of different creative things, mm -hmm. either in between or just center, one or the other. Don't care. But that would move me away from what I just did to being here now and then do the next one. And so I still do that with everything. I anoint myself beforehand. I make a bridge afterwards on everything I do. Get That's into wonderful. a different space. There is a little book, if no one's ever read, maybe. It's called The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe. It is still in print, maybe 60, 70 years, something like that. It is the story of William Russell, who had five careers, all successful at the same time. <laughs> Overachiever there. You think? <laughs> <laughs> but Over he did not. He did know the secrets <clears throat> of focus and then don't. Yeah. <clears throat> I've, I've heard a lot of psychics that I've interviewed before, and they said that they always get so drained. And they can only do a few at a time. And it's amazing that you can do, you did that many. That's... Years, decades. It was easy. Wow. Uh, no, it wasn't hard. It was interesting because each one, is a connection to an, that could be very deep and beautiful. And we're looking for solutions for people. Uh, when I read, I'm not necessarily looking to see if I'm correct or not. Most of my readings start off the same way of saying, I want you to pretend that you know me for thousands of years. We're old friends. And I want you to know you're going to ask, say, and I will interrupt and we'll go on from there. And let's make it easy for you so that we get to mm -hmm. the real core of whatever it is. And that frees me up and frees them up so that we can get closer quickly and therefore it becomes a very easy process. And even with people who were like the one guy at, in, at the psychiatrist's office, I had seen him at the waiting room and I thought, I hope I don't get this one. And sure enough, of course I did. And so I'm sitting opposite him and I, I probably called it in. Thank you. Now he was already booked with me. I didn't know it. So I'm sitting there and I look at him and I go, uh, can I ask you a couple of questions first? He said, what? I said, uh, you had an incident in which you were, uh, very violent with a roommate. He said, yeah, I tried to kill him. I said, and you have a gun. He said, yeah. I said, you have it on you. He said, yeah. I said, well, how do you get what gun? Because it was a different state I was working in. And he said, well, I'm a pr private investigator. I said, and you're feeling that kind of, you know, amping up? He said, yeah, that's why I'm here. I said, I have an answer, but you got to hold on for about three minutes. I'll be right back. I mm -hmm. raced out to the psychiatrist and I said, hey, Harry, listen get an ambulance for him right now and have them draw a blood sugar on him. What? I said, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and so it happened. Get a call from the lab. They tested it twice because 
It was off the charts, literally. Wow. Right. It was so high they had never. It broke. <laughs> it broke the records. Yeah. And so he was homicidal when that happened, which is why I look at all sides, body, mind, spirit, hmm. not separate. Well, we have five minutes left. I just want to ask you both. How do you, we'll start with you, Tiffany. How do you ground yourself before you do any of these readings? Do you do a special ritual or throw salt over your shoulders or <laughs> ground yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and it's interesting you said grounding. I'm an air sign, so I find that I have to ground a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but before I go in, depending on what I'm doing, um, but before I go in, I if I know I'm doing a reading or going into someone's home that day, earlier in the day, I will pray the rosary. I'm, I'm Catholic, so these are the tools that have been given to me. Mm -hmm. and I'm um, I have a wonderful relationship with the Blessed Mother, and she keeps me very safe. <laughs> and so I reach out to her. Um, her. Her true name is Miriam. And I call on her. I pray the rosary. I ask for her son, Yeshua, to come in with me. And that's really all I need. And if it's something where I'm kind of, I mean, one situation that is in my soul stories, I I was like, I'm not going to go because they visited me the night before I had to go. And I'm like, I probably, I don't think I can help mm. them. And then I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. Um, I just stood in my center. There's a heart in your home. You stand in the heart of your home and you call in and it's my group, goddess Kali, Ganesh. I mean, they are fierce. And they're all there for you. So I call all of them in. They surround me. And then I get my senses and, and I go, yeah. There you go. What cool. about you, Nancy? The easiest thing I've learned to do, and it's changed a little bit. I do anoint myself first on something that has a frequency that harmonizes with mine. And then I say a, a very simple prayer of, Thank you. May everything I say, do, feel, etc. And I go on, be of you. I'm done. So I put aside who I am to be an instrument. But, and then I go from there. Yeah. Whatever occurs, occurs. Oh, that sounds amazing. I I just want to say you guys are very enlightening. I'm so happy that we had you both on the show. Yes. Um, and we'll start, and Tiffany, where can people find you? Um, they can find me on Soul Stories YouTube or by saying or uh, looking at or emailing me, sorry, Soul Stories, that's plural, 444 at gmail.com. And I'm happy what? to any questions at all. If we missed anything, please reach out. Nancy, where can I find you? My name. <laughs> Nancy Orlin, Orlin Weber. <laughs> it's my it's name been... and so talk with Nancy Orlin Weber on oh, YouTube. Fantastic. It's been a great yeah, it's been a great enjoyable hour. Thank time. you so much. I, I learned so much from both of you and and I'll be sure to check out both of uh both of um your media coming up here in the in the future because it's uh you know, I, I really respect what you do for, for people. It's all about helping and it's not me. So, you know, you have my respect. Absolutely. You're, all do, you're both doing it for us <laughs> and for the audience. Are you kidding? <laughs> Thank we you. try. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, the audience, for your questions. And thank you so much for joining yes, us, Tiffany. Thank you for the compliment and the comment. Thank you. Oh, that was that was really interesting. They both were very interesting. Different sides. Yeah, I different sides, but it seemed like the same coin, huh? Yeah, same coin and very interesting. Um, I find and you it, got I, a compliment on your hat. Oh, my hat, <laughs> my strange hat. I, I like steampunk was in. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the uh, the detective. Um, it has to be fascinating, but she's so cool. And, you know, she doesn't, I find, no. I don't think I'd be so um, nonchalant back. about, yeah, yeah, you're dealing with all, like murders and 
you hear it casually drop. Yeah, I've been on de- you know murderers row or or you know yeah death it's row, like, and it's like my goodness, you just. But you know, I think she's. I think that it lends to the um, credibility. It's she's no so nonchalant, and this is what it is. And I don't care if you believe me. I know yeah, what it is. that's what you she's know? she's saying. Yeah. So it's a great show. I want to thank everybody in the chat for joining us. Cindy, Chasm, all you wonderful people, the newbies, uh, her followers. I think that was uh, Nancy's followers. Um, So I hope you come back. Uh, It would be so good to have you back. We'd love to have you. And they're already gone, I see. Well, that was fast. They were just in and out. But I still see Cindy still there. <laughs> uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting week. Weekend coming up. Uh, Monday is the big eclipse. I'm excited. I hope it's a safe eclipse for everyone. Make sure you have your glasses. I would love to talk about it for the first 10 minutes um, on Tuesday to see if what everybody thought about the big thing if we're still here. <laughs> If we are still here, we're yeah. still here. Well, the way TikTok is no. saying, we're all gonna die. I know, right? But <laughs> we're no, all gonna week, die. Uh, next week, our guest Mark Way. Um, he's very into this um, eclipse and has Good. a lot of information about it that I didn't even know. So stay tuned next week for his wonderful um, dealings with this eclipse and also in the uh, UFO realm. Yeah, and uh, our, our audience is growing. So make sure you you know save the link, share it with your friends. And we're going to try to keep building our um, chat up. We want to get this. We want to get, my goal is to get 250 by the end of April watching. Yeah. So the only way we're going to do that is if you guys help us share the link. Yes. Share the link, share it, share it into groups, share it wherever you like. Uh, We we will always remember our day one. Cindy, you will be here. Uh, Cindy, you're always going to get a shout out whenever case in you as well. Um, all of, all of these people have been, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we won't forget about you. You put a question in, we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up. No, definitely. But we have to get off before Sean Kelly gets us and hits me. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good evening, everyone. And have a great week. Have a great uh, eclipse. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Same place, same channel, same time. Yes.